So, uh, everybody, this is Awesome Talk, and we are here with Steven Van Vuren. Uh, I am Rick. I am Andrew. Stones. Sarah. And, uh, yeah, so before, here we are. Yeah, Go before ahead. we start with questions, I just thought maybe um, if you can describe your your movie a little just for people who might not. I mean, we've been uh, sharing stuff about this for the past, like, couple of weeks now, but for anyone who's watching who does not know anything about it, if you can just give a small description so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, I'm doing this uh, basically crazy idea to... I wanted to make a film that people would feel like they're actually flying through space. And the way I decided to do that was like, well, I mean, CGI is CGI. Um, and it could look cool, but it doesn't feel real. Yeah. So I decided to use real photographs. And uh, it's a little hard to use real photographs, <laughs> but the results are pretty awesome. And you know, once I had a little footage go viral, this kind of went from a one guy in his basement to a group of all volunteers scattered around the world that are putting this thing together. And it is still being basically created in my basement. And if you need to um, <laughs> eat Yes! Food, yes. Oh, oh, hey. well, it's, yes. A, it's actually kind of amazing how similar that room looks to the room we're in, because there's like cameras dangling from <laughs> ceilings. And... I, I think that the major difference is um, you have a a lot more LCD screens than we do, but I, we might uh, we might beat you out when it comes to cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we definitely won there. <laughs> so how did how did you get started? I mean, how does one embark on this on this journey? The only way you can start something like this is when you don't know what you're doing. That's a good. And that's a, that's good a great answer. answer. I, I mean. My original idea was I was going to make a little three-minute short film about space exploration. And uh, it's a really long story, but then I was like, oh, I'll make like a little planetarium film. And I'll just have some people talking, debating about, you know, yes, we should explore space. No, it's stupid. It's a waste of money. People are starving. And I'll put some images behind them, kind of like a little arty thing. And I actually did a couple of things like that that I was like, well, these are kind of lame. And then when I, I'd seen this really cool documentary called The Kids Stays in This Picture, which is, uh, was done about uh, 2004, 2005, somewhere in there. And it was about the producer, Bob Evans, who, uh, you know, he did a bunch of films in the 60s and 70s. And he agreed to be in this documentary, but he said, the only rule is you can't show me on camera. <laughs> and they were like, oh. <laughs> do something like that. I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> it's a documentary film. But he said, but you can use photographs. Mm. So they made this 90-minute documentary that was mostly photographs, and they did some some animation process. And I was like, I want to figure out how to do this. I didn't know how to do that kind of animation at that point. So I was always avid into stills. And I, but, and I always liked animation and done stop motion and stuff like that. So I thought, well, I'm going to, I can make a film using this stuff course i didn't know what a stupid statement that was to say and that's the thing i didn't know what i didn't know you know it's a donald rumsfeld thing so <laughs> so uh i got in there and my first attempt was just completely awful and so i basically had to invent the process as i'm doing it i mean and that's that's still true now because it turns out in the history of film no one has ever actually made a film of any consequence or length entirely from photographs using photo animation. And the geeky term is, I kind of reinvented multi-plane photo animation, which Disney used for, like, if you look at Snow White and there were, like, these three-dimensional layers. Yeah, yeah. It was this, uh, it was this old thing called an Oxbury animation stand, that had multiple glass layers yeah. in it and a camera. And they would, in addition to shooting one frame at a time, they were shooting through the different layers, and they'd move each one of those glass layers one at a time. And that's basically exactly the process that I've, that I've reinvented. Wow. In fact, the, yeah. the, the kind of cool thing about this film is you could do it with a lot of paper and one of those cameras. And by a lot of paper, I mean several million dollars worth of paper. 
Yeah. But it doesn't actually require a computer to do it. It's re really just the photographic layers and a lot of time and and patience and or craziness, depending on. And I imagine so I much that. rendering, you want to kill something. Yeah. Is my guess. <laughs> Yes. So I think, about, <laughs> I think about the amount of time we spend staring at a small progress bar for hours going, jeez, please, just hurry. Yeah. And all I we're imagine... doing is rendering like little 10, 15 minute clips. <laughs> yeah. and what yeah. you're doing is, is such a huger scale than, well, I guess like the, the only real comparison is like when we're rendering the full like finished show. Yeah, sure. But like uh, just the little, the little snippets and whatnot that we do here and there, I've seen it render, and it takes like an hour and a half, two hours. So, can I can I ask you what what um what you're using to, to do all this? Like, what programs you're using and whatnot? Sure. Um, so ninety percent of the work in the film, because people always want to come and say, "Hey, let me see the film." I say, "Well, if you got a few days, and we can look at a lot of still images, because most of the film is Photoshop." Yeah. And we got some volunteers who use GIMP, but GIMP has some limitations, so a lot of the more advanced stuff. And then we have a couple of volunteers who uh, have written custom code to kind of process NASA's images, because hmm. when you get into this, one of the things you do not know is what a disaster the storage of images from space is. Right. It's all these different universities that get a grant that are part of such and such mission, and somebody slaps together some old unix code and comes up with a file format that nobody can open yeah. except the mainframe there oh, so Jesus. there's all this, to get it all this data is not just like oh i'll go to a website and download some files and so that's 95 percent of the film is just pro it's image processing yeah. um and that's the bad news the good news is there are a bunch of people out there and there's a very cool thing that you should link to um called unmanned space Flight. And that's what changed the direction of this project, is it's a forum of amateur space image processors. Wow. That's and these great. are people who just dig through these databases, and several of them now are kind of, have become like key members of the film. And all of the major space image processors out there have donated their images to this film. That's wow. great. Wow. If, if I had had to do the image processing myself, you know, I would need, you know, some some kind of, I would need to be in Walt Disney's chamber, you know, <laughs> trying to quote some of my life as well, because, um, for example, in the in the teaser, I'm sure you've seen the, the Saturn fly-through stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I did the image processing of the, of the ring composite that's used, because Cassini only has a little black and white one megapixel camera, so even when you met, even the basic color pictures that NASA releases, those are stitched composites that people have to manually do. You can't do it automated. The mm -hmm. ring composite I do took me three months of wow. seven days a week, 10 hours a day to just do that one thing. So without all these other image processors out there doing that. You'd be um, retiring before you actually finish the film. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would still be trying to get like four or five shots ready just for the teaser. So that's really what changed my fortune is finding people who – already had stuff that they'd already processed and then were willing to, to do more stuff for the film. I mean, they're the real kind of unsigned heroes of, of pulling something like this off. And it's also a great chance for people to see their work because people just don't know. You know every once in a while, one of them gets an astronomy picture of the day. But for the most part, you know, this is stuff that people don't see. Mm -hmm. And uh, to give you an idea of, of what kind of size is involved, the, the kind of final multiplane animation, that's done in Adobe After Effects. Yes. Um, but that's a very important part of the process, but it's still just a, you know, kind of the final stage of, of getting all. It's kind of like when you're doing, you know, hand-drawn animation. The bulk of the work is drawing the individual frames. And once you start photographing and whatever, that's certainly complex of the art, but it's, it's not nearly as time-consuming. Um, but I'm working with a frame that's 5,600 pixels wide and 4,200 pixels tall. And I'm either working in 16-bit or 32-bit mm. um, to maintain the integrity of the images. And then in order to be able to create this illusion of depth through photo animation, the downside is you need very large images. So it's not obvious that when you're pixelating, when you're, when you're moving you know, scaling and zooming to create yeah. the illusion of most, so like the ring composite, those are a hundred, I work with still, 
composites that are 100 megapixels to a couple of gigapixels. Wow. Wow. Image size. So I have about 250 terabytes of... Uh, Whoa! Oh! <laughs> and, uh, and the film at 24 frames a second, it's about a gig of frame in the rendered image. So the final film will be somewhere between about um, 45 and 65 terabytes as the master wow. file. Wow. And we'll and several years that, of rendering. That is amazing. something that you Jeez. would not want to bit torrent. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that may take about as long as it would take to render. Yeah, I thought it was just funny just to make that available. Say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make my master render available for the torrent. <laughs> How come nobody's seeding this? <laughs> Every day, 45 leeches, zero seats. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. You said um, you made that like comment about people people that said stuff like, "Oh, people are starving. We don't need to fund this." It it stuck out to me because I've had so many arguments with people I know. Whenever something some something scientific comes on the news, I I know a lot of people that are like, "Why do we waste our money on this when there's you know people to worry about here and blah blah blah? It's such a waste." And it always makes me so angry because I know how important it is. And people don't really understand the amount of things that they have just in their daily life that came from scientific research, NASA's research, you know. And um, was part of you making this movie, because when the first time I saw this trailer, which was quite a while ago, one of the th it, it brought tears to my eyes. And one of the things I thought was, now those people will be able to look with their own eyes and say, this is why it's worth it to fund these projects because of what I'm looking at right now. Right. This is Here's real. This is as real as we could possibly get right now. Maybe this will make people understand why those things matter. Did, did, was that part of it or was it more like, I just really want to make this movie happen? No, that's 110% of what this film is about. I mean, wow. you're absolutely connecting the core. That's a good anger. Because um, what happened, the whole reason I got started down doing this is I was, you know, I had read Carl Sagan's Cosmos when I was a kid. Yes. And he talked about this moon Titan. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. We have to go to Titan. Yes. I mean, we just have to. Still so I, I would just I was just a, another geek following the uh, you know the Cassini mission to to Saturn and then had this lander it has a spacecraft that's going to land on Titan and I was like I expected I mean I was I thought there was going to be news coverage and they would do parades yeah. and all this kind of crap because we're landing a spacecraft a billion you know kilometers from Earth. On a, on a moon that's much larger than our moon. This and, is not, yeah, and not even knowing what the surface was going to be like that we were landing on. Or is it even going to be stable? It lasted way longer than we thought it yeah, would. Yeah. We had no idea. Well, I mean, if you want news coverage, you got to put Kim Kardashian on that thing so that yep. she lands there and then and everybody will watch. I am Honestly, totally I, fine with sending would, her to yeah. space. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's send her and Whatever. Paris Hilton and Justin Bieber all up on the next spacecraft that lands. <laughs> They don't need suits or anything like That's that. Fine. I actually want to see how their bodies <laughs> react to the up. exposed <laughs> environment of Titan. Can, can, speaking of Titan, can I tell them about the paper thing? Or... Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we're, we're working. We're working on a promo for the next show that's inspired by your film. And we were sitting here, and we, we do like paper animations. So we would sit here, and she just made a little paper titan to put no, in No, you made a paper Enceladus. It's, I'm sorry, it's Enceladus. Enceladus. Yeah. Get it right, Sorry, Rick. sorry, sorry. And I tried making yeah. a paper Saturn, and it turned out being a much yeah, better Jupiter. He sent but... me a picture of it, and I said, Saturn's done. And I was like, well, that is really nice, but it's a really nice Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized the only difference between Saturn and Jupiter in my stupid head was the big red dot. So I filled that in, and then... There it goes. I have a, qu Hi. a question. What's up, buddy? What's going on? How's it going? Oh, the cat, the cat uh, is a little intimidating. Yeah. Just rub your thigh against my arm. That's I have fine. a question that's, that's a little off topic from the movie, but I um, was watching an interview with you, and you talked a little bit about um, that you went to high school in South Africa, and I'm a really big proponent for there needs to be more science education in this country, and it's mm -hmm. being killed mm -hmm. at every turn, and I feel like 
children now are growing up without the ability to think scientifically and critically, and it's really hurting us, and that's part of why funding is being cut left and right. And I was just wondering, because um, you went to high school there, it, what's the, do, can you do like a com comparison sort of as to like how science education was there? Was it a really important thing? Was Did you feel like it was more important than the way it is here at the present time, which is not important at all, it seems? Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, there's no question that that's a, I, one of the things is uh, I was trying to get out of um, South Africa. It's kind of the height of apartheid, and I had to, you know, I, I didn't know. It's like, well, you have to take an SAT school test, you know, back then. And I didn't, I didn't even know what the test was. And, uh, you know, and, and I had done no prep. I had not taken any um, American kind of classes. And I was also taking it, I think, the first month of my junior year. So I was only halfway through high school. But the math on it was so easy because I'd already, you know, for, for most people, calculus was a required math course wow. in ninth grade. Whoa, jeez. Wow. I failed oh, algebra twice. <laughs> oh, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I'd taken calculus and tricks. So I, you know, I, I got my scores, you know, I blew up the math score. And it was like, because I'd always, I'd, yeah. just, that stuff wasn't hard. And because they only basically taught the core stuff. You know, yeah. it was English, geography, science, um, history. There wasn't a lot of like kind of ancillary type courses that you did. Um, and I, it's you no know, very kind of classical education. And I think that that's a good education because you you basically it's Shakespeare and Einstein and Voltaire and 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 that kind of stuff. You know, it's real. You know, I'm. I I don't that does actually, I think, kind of relate to the film because when I was, I have cast here too, there's one right down here. We have three, but you guys still only win. Ha! <laughs> we win! We've got five! <laughs> well, okay, you definitely win. Um, yes! I don't know yeah, if it's winning. Like <laughs> I'll take it. When I, when I was, when I was, when Cassini got to Titan, I don't know if you guys remember, but there wasn't any live coverage other than you could go to NASA's website. Yes. It was 2007. Watch a 320 by right? 240 little video yeah. of Cass the Cassini arrival and then the Huygens landing. And I was so angry. And the result of the anger is this film. Because I was like, wow. it's because people don't think they had, it has anything to do with them. Yeah. But I right. said, yeah. if That's people exactly were right. there, if they were flying through those rings, they would be the biggest thing ever. Right. Yep. So that's making like, this film. Although the, the one thing, the one thing I want to say that, yeah, about. the one thing I want to say then is I'm kind of glad that they pissed you off. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Uh, because just uh, even with just the teaser footage that I've seen so far, it's mind blowing. <laughs> and your kitty cat is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I absolutely understand the anger you're talking about. I get that all the time with something. I remember sitting on my bed with my laptop when um, the LHC went live, and they showed physicists at a bunch of different labs all over the world, all in their pajamas, celebrating and opening champagne. And I was sitting on my bed thinking, I am watching something that's going to one day change the face of science. And then I noticed the next day, none of it was on the news. And I was Nothing. like, this is so unbelievably disappointing and disheartening that nobody cares that this is happening. And it is so enormous. <laughs> and I, I have a question. So you've been working on this film for roughly seven years already. Yes. The first, first three years was a lot of on and off, stop, start, kind of being broken, you know, and trying to reinvent it. Kind of, you know, there's a lot of failure that precedes kind of finding your groove, but you know, it's a natural part of the process. And in that seven years, like I've noticed, especially, I, I, I always say this to you, especially in the last year, I feel like we've seen guys like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye, they're kind of uh, becoming Michio Kaku rock stars in, in a way. And I'm it like it it's incredible. fills me with joy to see that because, like, when Bill Nye had the, the debate with the the creationist guy, John Ham, Ken Ham, Ken, Ken Ham, and when I when I looked at Facebook the next day, and I saw so many people posting support for Bill Nye, and now I see you know the Cosmos is now out again and with, the Cosmos with Neil. Remake, which is... There there seems to be like this perfect storm happening where people are coming together, and and then I saw your film, the, the trailer for your film, 
and there's this perfect storm that seems to be happening where science is being being pushed again and people seem to be thirsting for it more again do you see that have you seen a shift in that at all during your experience of producing this film in the last seven years have you seen a shift happen without a doubt i mean and i think that's actually i mean there's a lot of downside to the internet but there's no question that that's the upside yeah. because it's allowed things to be shared and also finally nasa itself is finally getting a little bit of a clue that like, oh, the world has changed. And mm -hmm. you look at the way that they put out curiosity versus how they put out Cassini. Yeah. They really learned. I, one of the big battles was, this was something I didn't know, is it was a huge deal that Cassini made its images available to the public directly before the scientists got a hold of it. And there were internal battles and people like, well, what are, you know, we can't let these, you know, unwashed hands. And plus, what if somebody, an amateur, discovers something before a scientist does? Oh, There's well, all just this kind shows. of stuff. And a couple of times they tried to shut it down. Wow. Versus, you know, where we are today where, you know, it's just the expectation that the stuff is, is going to be shared. So there has been, I, I do think the tide is turning. Um, and there is this kind of groundswell, and I attribute it to the fact that the, you know, because I was, you know, I was a nerd geek teased in school, but the internet has allowed people who are comfortable with technology, means of self-expression, means of connecting, and it's also demonstrated to other people that, you know, you know, when I was in high school, knowing, knowing anything about a computer made you an idiot. Right. But now, it's like, oh, you get a good job, you blah, 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 you can... It, it's something that it's valued by society, and I think I think there's a, a trickle-down effect about that that um, has started to make stuff like this a little more popular than it was, which is which is a good thing. On the other hand, there's still, it's still a long way to go, yeah. but there is... There, there, it definitely is a good good thing what's happening and you know kind of for me it's worked out that it's been good timing because when I started you know this kind of community effort on the internet you know was before crowdsourcing and a lot of other stuff but as the film has gotten to a stage where it was needed the support it's come in because that's the, the cool thing is over the seven years um, you know we've gotten nearly $125,000 in donations, wow. you know, awesome. about, and about half of those have come in, you know, five and $10 a time from like all over the world, That's you know, great. South America, you know, Eastern Europe, Asia, Malaysia, all these, all these places where people have like seen the clip and like want to be a part of it and be a part of that community. How many people do you think uh, you have uh, working with you on this project at this point? I mean, are you like in the like 50, 100, 200, you know, where, where are you at with as far as like, you know, where all this, uh, the, 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 the online content's support. coming from? Yeah. yeah, where's it coming from? Like, how many people is it coming from, you think? There's, uh, there's a, you know, because everybody's a volunteer, so um, everybody has a day job. So yeah. there's a core group. I mean, there's myself, unfortunately, in the, in the last couple of years, I've been able to, to work on this, you know, pretty much around the clock all the time because of a whole other side tangent is in the process of doing this, I figured out how to make something called digital cinema packages. And mm -hmm. I make these digital cinema packages for other starving filmmakers. And uh, that's allowed me to basically have the, the time to work on this full time. So there's me working on it all the time. And then there's about a core group of 10 people who work 10 to 15, 20 hours a week. Um, on the film and then there's about another 20 25 people who you know kind of work on stuff some some you know just a few hours a week sometimes they can do a little bit more sometimes not and then there's about a group of about i think it's about 35 that are independent image processors that donate their images so you got so about 100, not, 100 people 7500 people yeah right? they're not working directly exactly they're not working directly on the film but they contributed, you know, images that they've worked on over the past. They've all touched 10, on it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, so there's there's tens of thousands of hours from other people, and it's it's really a you know a collective effort. Wow, that's great. Can you can you talk a little bit about um, 
when you were growing up, I mean, what was your, were you interested in this stuff your whole life? I mean, was this something that, that when was the first time you were introduced to? Yeah, what was, what was the uh, first, the first moment where you're like, yep, this, this is happening? <laughs> I wanted to be an astronaut, you know, very right. unoriginal, but I mean, I, and I, I tried actually my best, but to, uh, make the astronaut thing happen. And, uh, you know, I, I was blind as a bat, I wore contacts and that proved a problem and kind of derailed, um, what I wanted to do with science. But actually when I was a little kid, I read about Robert Goddard and, uh, his life story. And I was like, rockets, space. Yeah. So, what could be better? Yeah. And then that, you know, I just stayed with that interest all along, but the astronaut thing didn't work out. And uh, I got into film um, when I saw 2001 A Space Odyssey. I was about uh, 18, and I was like, I would not seen a lot of different films at that point. And I was like, you can make films about stuff you're interested in? Okay, this is awesome. And I'd always been interested <laughs> in photography. You know, as a kid, my sure. dad bought me one of those old manual SLRs, and I'd learned to, sh nice. to, to shoot that way. So um, it was just a kind of perfect thing. But the filmmaking thing, you know, this was back in the days of shooting film. Um, that didn't exactly work out either. So I went to the computer field and did very well. You know, I was in IT during the 90s, mm, during all the 80s. Oh, that's the yeah. best time, man. The Y2K, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know... Like the old cliche, money does not buy happiness. And I was making good money. I was pretty miserable because I'd gone up into where I wasn't, you know, I was working in a Fortune 500 company doing the corporate crap stuff. And uh, I decided to get back in film in 99. And that kind of coincided with me getting back involved in following the Cassini project. And so my filmmaking career has gotten sucked up in this one project, but I'm really not sorry because it's I, I've enjoyed the whole process. I mean, it's been hard at times, um, but you know, a good hard. Yeah, uh, it's, sure. it's, a, it's a hell of an investment, but I think and it's the inspirational. Be it, it's incredible. completely yeah, really, inspirational it's to, to, to generations uh, to come. You know, and there you now. Forget yeah. it. You know, it's, it's totally yeah, man, awesome. Yeah, and I love hearing that you wanted to be an astronaut. I remember saying uh, not that long ago that it makes me sad when I think about when you watch old movies from, like, decades ago. You, like, little kids will always say, like, I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. And I'm like, you never hear kids say right. that anymore. Ever. Not ever. I've never heard a kid say that. Now, and, um, now, like, I don't I, remember the last time I heard little kids say they want to be anything when they grow up. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, they're like, I want an iPhone. I want an iPhone. And that's pretty much all yeah. they want um, like, uh, <laughs> I, I know that that's... You know, the, one of the worst things I heard, this was like during one of my, some school asked me to come talk about working on the film. And the teacher was talking about one of her students. They did like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And like a third of them wrote, I want to be a celebrity. Oh. Oh, That's a, not even a thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's just like little, a little, status. Wait, wait, a little, little silver lining to that. Uh, some celebrities that I wouldn't mind growing up to be, because I'm still not growing up, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, Michio Kaku, uh, Bill Nye, they're all fucking celebrities in my eye. And they're the right kind of celebrities that should get a lot more face, such as yourself, Steve. Uh, so. the, the ending of... Uh, that's, that's a big thing. I mean, that's actually there's actually a part of the film um, that uh, that's actually what I've been working on recently is where I we kind of show the loss of the night sky yeah. and the fact mm. they, the stars are out tonight. It's rays. People don't think about stars. They think about, you know, celebrities. Yep. Right. And it's actually a part of the film wow, because I think it's, I think that's, and it's gotten really messed up with how people think about the world is we don't see the stars when we walk outdoors in four, which is really, a big shame. I, I believe if you wanted to do one thing to change the world for the better, there would be no light pollution, and when you walked outside, you would see the stars. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. I am absolutely for, um, there's places that try and um, push for there to be commu areas and communities where, just for observing the sky, there's, where there's no light allowed, and I wish that there was more a, push for that in places. There, yeah. There's this really, uh, it's weird, there's a really sweet documentary on Netflix um, that I'm trying to remember, I think it's, it's like Lights Out or something like that, 
and it was exactly yeah. that. It was uh, all of the the light pollution and whatnot. There's uh, this one town in the middle of Arizona called Sky City, and like they have a light ordinance as opposed to like a noise ordinance. So like you can only have certain wattage light bulbs after certain hours, and wow. there's no street lights or anything like that. And the sky view is absolutely incredible. We need incredible. more of that. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, e- even just locally, uh, up in upstate New York, my uh, my father's uh, dad used to have a farm, and they went up there, and he took some absolutely incredible pictures of the night sky that I have never seen in my life, and literally I'm four hours from that. But anywhere in, in this whole stretch of land, like you look up and you're like, oh yeah, there's Orion's Belt. That's about it. You yeah. Don't, you don't. You don't get to see like the Milky Way in this area, not at all. Sure. And uh, I, I agree with you. That was one of the big things was um, that um, the amount of time that's spent now just looking at all the bright shiny lights down here instead of the bright shiny lights up there kind of narrows your concept of the universe around you. Well, I mean that was human beings' entertainment for all the time except for the past you sure. know, 100, 100 years, years. that's even. it and, and and we've lost touch with being in tune with the earth uh, as far as i'm concerned it's, mm-hmm. it's one of those things that should be innate and built into all of us yeah. like like food you, yeah when you look up at the sky and you look up at the you see the the milky way that's that's where you get that that sense of how really minuscule you are in comparison to the vastness of just the galaxy but i'd like and, to contest that for a second can can you say what you said about because sometimes people say that the the universe makes them feel Tiny small, and but you have a, an, an opposing view to that. Could you say what that is? Well, my opposing view to that came from I have an illness that is sooner or later going to kill me, and space is like my Don't we all? love. I absolutely love everything about it, and um, you know. But I've heard so many times people say that when they think about how extremely enormous the universe is and how un un. They don't even know how enormous it is, but it makes them feel so insignificant and small and unimportant that they almost can't handle it, and it it actually causes anxiety. And I always say, I love space so much, especially after I got sick, I noticed that I actually became more interested because once I'm gone, I'm going to be a part of, once again, be a part of what I consider the most absolutely beautiful thing. And... When I look at it, I know that I couldn't be here without those stars having died. So it makes me feel like I'm part of the biggest thing that we know of, mm. not insignificant and tiny. Here, here. And I wish Twinkies. more if more people thought that way, they wouldn't be so intimidated by, you know, I, I mm. feel like... Um, we are the a, universe experiencing itself. There, I mm. feel like there's um, a sort of a group of pe- people, this idea that... You have to be a guy in a suit and a tie with a thousand degrees in order to really get what's so great about astronomy or cosmology. And that's just not true, you know? And that's why I think people like Neil deGrasse Tyson become these celebrity types because he jokes around with, the, you know, it's that personality that does it. It's And that's what sure. grabs people and pulls them in. But sure. Steve, you a philosophical guy? <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, hey, I like to, I, I like to rant with the best of them. Good. If, if I had an alternate career, it would be, you know, it would be the guy in the street corner just letting people have it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay that people are calling you Steve? Because I know some Stevens don't like it. <laughs> As long as it's Steve with a PH, that's the only thing I care about. <laughs> I always make sure and ask first, but I noticed that these two over here. I'm sorry, I'm I'm a simple mind. If I go more than two syllables, I'm lost. So. Well, it's not like my my full name that the government just made me get back. It was too long for a while when I first came over, but it's uh, Stephen Audrey and Janssen von Furen. Wow. wow, what a that's, great name! That's, that's an, an awesome name. name. That's an alpha name. How yeah. dare the government take half of that yeah, away right? from you? That makes me feel like you have hard fists. <laughs> yeah, of rage. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's it's a big fancy name, but unfortunately, you know, in in South Africa, it's kind of a it's kind of the equivalent of a, Smith. It's kind of a rural farming opera Connor kind of name. Right. You know, <laughs> redneck. Basically. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, South um, African so, redneck. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond. Um, I just <laughs> never heard that before. <laughs> Layers, so, man. Uh, but, but actually, back to, to your point about, you know, one, 
I'll tell you two cool things about the film. Um, one is that a lot of people who say, well, space me makes me feel small, I often find are people who don't actually look at it. Mm. Yeah. When you actually are working, like that's the thing that, that's what sustains me through all the kind of crap that you have to go through to try to, to pull together a film like this. And, and, and especially when you get to have the good problems that you get into distribution and theaters and you know, paperwork and rights and all this kind of stuff. But the actual working with the images, when I spend day in and day out looking at whether it's Cassini or Hubble, I mean, it is such a powerful, spiritual, awesome thing to do that if I were just doing this for my own entertainment, and there's a guy that, um, a volunteer that image processor that is in Australia, and this guy named Adam Keel, and he works as a satellite image processor by day for the Australian government. And he was processing LRO, which is the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Um, he was processing those images. And he told me, he's like, I, in fact, he started working on the film and then fell off for a while and then came back. He says, I've just got to come back. So I can't get home and watch the news and you yeah. know deal with all this bullshit, my job and all this kind of thing. He says, when I work on these images, I feel at peace. I agree. And I, I that's what people don't, don't get. It's like we've lost that connection. You know, it's like, you know, we take a little vacation, you know, whatever, fishing, whatever. We go out in the wilderness. It was like, ah, and take a breath. But think if that was like most of what we did every day was take that breath. We would yeah. be, not be the miserable bastards that we are right now. Oh, right. Amen and, to that. It, yep, it's just like when you take that energy and do something really cool with it, um, this was uh, when I had the first clip go viral. Um, there was this guy named Colin Legg that's an important part of the film, and he was also in, from Australia. And he was a software developer by day, but he got into astro time lapse, which is taking time lapse of the Milky Way. Mm. And he saw my the first one minute clip I posted, and he got a hold of me. He says, "I just want to do something for this film." So I said, "Well, you know, I was wanting to demonstrate this loss of the night sky, and we started brainstorming." And long story short, he decides that he's going to do something that's never been done before, which is to take five DSLR cameras and build a rig so that they all shoot and fire at the same time. So yes. he can deliver a very high resolution yes. image to me. Mm. He's going to take this out into Lake Dora, which is a dry lake bed in Western Australia, hundreds of miles from any lights. And he's going to shoot a time lapse for 11 days and 11 nights continuously. Oh, wow. And he's gonna, he's gonna build and design this out of his own pocket. You know, he spent many tens of thousands of dollars to do this for, you know, what's gonna be about five minutes of footage in wow. the film. Wow. And uh, shot 111,000 raw images. Wow. 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 Oh, man. Now, this be part of it. I just finished processing this stuff. That's and amazing. it is mind blowing. Wow. And so like, that's, I can't wait. I'm so excited so for that. Take that kind of energy and you do something, you know, just completely crazy but awesome like that. That's what I love. So, yeah. I, you know, I think this kind of the, this kind of anger and frustration that we all feel at times, there's a way to channel it and yeah. become one of these crazy people. Like, well, well let's do something. Right. Yeah. I agree. That's, I agree. And you know what? There's anything I, that makes people want to know more i feel good about like um that's why we're doing this like yeah, my yeah. like my um you know my twitter awesome my twitter account which is solely um science and physics related the raging science uh, um twitter account that i messaged you on a long time ago and told everyone please go watch this trailer it's the most amazing thing ever ah! <laughs> um i get a lot of my followers are a lot of like physics students and stuff and um, I noticed one person followed me who is 16, and in his profile it said that he wanted to be an astronaut. And I always remember that as being the best feeling, because I'm like, man, if anything that I ever put on here that makes someone go to learn more about it, I feel like I did something yep. really good, you know? I mean, I might be in pain a lot and stuff like that, but if I can just get someone to go, man, that's really cool, I kind of want to know more about that, and it leads to something, like, that's awesome, you know, and I feel like this film is a huge step for a lot of people in that direction, it, you know? It also combines something that I think is uh, inherently related. Um, 
art and science are very closely related. Absolutely. You can't, uh, I personally think that art is <clears throat> the only real way that science can get broken down for everyone, not just the, the scientists. Um, like it, your, your movie is a beautiful work of art. It's a work of art. It absolutely, absolutely is. And it's because of the fact that there's so much stuff that went into getting those images, getting the, getting the satellites out there just to get the pictures to make the images, the, the, the science that, that it took to get the, the imagination from it there took to do that. back to here to process everything and then for you and your team to actually put everything together so it coalesces into this nice fluid uh, uh, Movie, scene painting it, yeah. it, it, just from point A to point B and then like just simpletons like us can sit in front of it and go ooh it's dude. an orchestra <laughs> it's, yeah, it's yeah, gorgeous yeah. and the fact that you can you can use all of that just for for the masses and going back to what Sarah was saying if that inspires maybe a small handful of people to actually go out and maybe it's maybe inspire more than a small handful. Well, I'm yeah. just hypothetically, I'm I'm, I'm lowballing here. <laughs> but like, if you get like one one eleven year old that looks at that and he's like, I'm gonna go to Saturn, and then fifty years later the motherfucker's well, flying out to Saturn. Well, you can't land on Saturn. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 fifty hey, years you don't know what the it. science is. <laughs> fifty years you don't know what the That's science is. That's not true, Andrew. Yeah, we know, we know. There's nothing to land on. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But we were just watching an episode of uh, what is it? it's called Tam, right? Tam. Yep. Tam. And um, Neil deGrasse Tyson said almost the same thing. Imagine if we developed a world where those kids who are 11 years old, instead of looking at TV and saying, I want to be a celebrity, they look at something scientific that blows their minds and says, that's what I want to do when, mm -hmm. I, when I grow up. I want to yeah. be a scientist. Yeah. I, I want to go to Saturn. I want to be the first child to land on Saturn. Yeah, I said it. I'll land on Saturn because I'm going to make science oh, happen that makes you able to land on it. Anyway. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to make well, science happen. <laughs> Well, well, maybe there'll be science that will turn into a gaseous form, and then you can, you know... He is a gaseous, <laughs> gaseous form. I am, I am. <laughs> me, me and Taco Bell, we have a scientific uh, agree, uh, uh, agreement study yeah. going on right yeah, now. Yeah, right. I'm going to try listen. to fully go into gas. I have, I have a question that's off. I, I just wanted to ask it, because I, I was listening to you talk about um, how much you loved Saturn in an interview that was on your website, and I just wanted to ask... Personally, because I have my money on Europa for being the place in our general area that has life. I was wondering if you're a Titan guy for that, or an Enceladus guy for that, or a Europa guy for that. <laughs> Man, that's a that's a great question. Um, I'm I, I still <laughs> with Titan. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> the whole water but thing. Europa, Europa, you know, Europa is really cool, but one of the, I, I mean, the, the real, the, another thing that really pisses me off is that they have to go, well, should we go to Titan or should we go to Europa or should we go to Enceladus? Yeah. All wrong answers. We should be going to all of them. We should. Man, it's I not agree. should we, it's yeah. we should. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's like get rid of a couple of a couple of those useless ass tank programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. That would easily, easily fund those missions. And the thing is is that and back to your you know, you, someone said the word orchestra and you're talking about uh, inspiration and this this thing is that that's my. That's the whole reason I have. You know, when I got into this film going into IMAX theaters, a lot of these theaters are like, "No, you need charts, you need graphs, you need interviews, you need talking heads, and blah blah blah." And I was like, "Bullshit." No. What you need is what I need, which is I just want to. I was an astronaut. Why do you want to be an astronaut? I want to fly in space. It's right. not. Again, it's not complicated. Being able to have that experience does really change and. This really awesome thing happened um, last year is, you know, when I, was, when I was making this film, it's like, I didn't really think, you know, little kids, you know, like three or four years old would be interested in this kind of film. But um, there's this event called Astronomy Days that a museum in Raleigh, North Carolina does, and they've asked us to be a part of that. And I've gone down there and I've just shown unedited random footage that's, that's not even posted online. It's just kind of work in progress clips, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And it's in a small auditorium. It's not even a giant screen. And they're just all these people who come in that don't really know what the film is. They've never seen a teaser and they come in 
and I talk a little bit and they're there with, you know, they're, I mean, they're mostly families and it ends up being packed every year. And this last year I'm doing a little Q and A at the end and all these young kids are asking me, you know, kids from five to 10 years old are asking kind of interesting questions. But then this little girl, she might have been three or four at best, comes walking up all the way to the front of the auditorium. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, she's going to ask me at the bathroom, you know, what is this going to be? You know, and she looks up at me and says, what is beyond the edge of the universe? Oh, God, that's so, an awesome little philosopher right there. It's like, it's like, could you hear a pin drop? I mean, is this the, is by far the best question. I mean, the adult questions were all kind of dorky questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I told her, I said, I don't know. But I bet you might be the person that answers that question. Nice. Wow. That great. That's wow. awesome. Oh, there's a clink to that. Yeah, I'm so oh, sorry. This is, that was, wow. I'm like, if this is the end of the film and I get hit by a bus today, <laughs> it's a success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Call that a win. You know? Yeah. Exactly. That is a win. Well, one other thing that I really wanted you to talk about before you went was um, if you could give a little information for people that are watching that might want to also join in on volunteering. Yeah. Plug yourself, please, sir. Yeah, yeah. plug yourself like crazy. Yeah. We actually have a little bit of a volunteer push here. One of our kind of key volunteers has had kind of some personal problems and fallen out, so we're trying to, to, to do some supplemental. But we need people to do all sorts of things, and you don't need any skills whatsoever. One of the urgent needs is we just need people who've got time to waste on the Internet want to download stuff, um, and it's just downloading pictures. Right. Um, we need people that speak other languages and do translations. We're getting the teaser rolled out. Um, that's a big part of the film, and the reason we don't have narration and, and voices in it is we want anybody in any part of the world to have the same experience watching it. Mm. So we're wanting to get the teaser out in about 25 different languages. So especially people that might speak Arabic or Mandarin or mm -hmm. Javanese or Indian or dialects thereof, we definitely need some translation volunteers. And if you're a little on the geekier side, you've done a little Photoshop, you do a little Java programming, or you just like to waste time on social media, we need some social media volunteers. All of that would be really helpful right now. And just go to the website, hit us up on Twitter or Facebook, and uh, we'll get you connected. Can you can you um, say all the I, I I know, but can you say all the addresses for where people can find all this stuff, like all the web addresses? Sure. Um, uh, the easiest way is just uh, insaturnsrings.com. Okay. And then we're at insaturnsrings on Twitter, and then. Thankfully, to the good gods at Google, if you just type in Saturn's <laughs> rings in any search engine, you'll get right there. It, we're easy to find. That's been one of the blessings of all the viral coverage. Excellent. Excellent. Um, did anybody have anything else they absolutely uh, wanted to ask? I just oh. want to say thank you so yes, much. Thank, I this have been so an honor, been honor, to, honor to talk to someone that cares so much about educating the public and getting more people interested in astronomy. Because it's just lacking so much, and you have so much dedication. I honestly, when I, I don't get teary at movie trailers. Okay, like yeah, I'm, I'm geeking out hard. It's all right. She's Listen. got her geek on. We're letting her go. I be, and it was simply because I was like, this is the data that people never get to understand yeah. in their daily life. Like this is the result of that, and that is so amazing. You're doing amazing things. I'm and, so and happy I, you talked to us. I promise you that when this video airs on Tuesday, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure it looks amazing and sounds amazing. And to get everything everyone in our power. to watch this. We're going to try our damnedest to, to, yeah. to do it justice. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, um, so we're going to. It's been a blast talking to you guys. This is by far the most fun interview I've ever done. Uh, so. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll show, take that as a win, too. Yeah. Listen, yeah, yeah, it's cool. they built, they built yeah. a bar, and we have beer mug sponsors, and the show is a three-hour-long <laughs> show about people sitting around a bar getting drunk and talking about stuff. Yeah. And we all have... That, that's my only disappointment is I'm not there, and I don't have a beverage in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned my lesson, and uh, you know, I tell you what, bug your local IMAX theater that they got to play this film. And oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. Oh, got it. I will, and that's one thing. Go ahead. Be in person. I would yeah. love to do that. Yeah, I will definitely. absolutely do that. Yeah, I, I, but, uh, yeah, I, I personally cannot wait to see this on uh, the big yeah. screen. Like, just seeing it on her iMac. 
Just a MAC, not a MAX. But just seeing it on that nice little HD screen, the, oh, the, the trailer is incredible. I cannot wait until I see it like bigger than a, you know, a two floor fam, two family house. I cannot <laughs> wait. I'm yeah, so thrilled. I can't wait either. And we are we're we we want to donate to it too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Awesome talk. And we we also this. are encouraging anybody out there that's watching the interview, that's watching our show. Yeah. If you have a, just a sliver of love for science, and most of you probably have bigger than that. Go fucking donate. Or you better. Yeah. <laughs> if not, you're gonna love science starting now. No. So here's where we start. Here's where we start. Okay. This. Guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you, Thank man. You, Thank Sarah. you very much for doing this. Thank you so don't, much. Don't, don't.